what's happening is that in these procedures, we're making our minds more coherent. What coherent means is that everything is synchronized and there's no noise. That's the absolute meaning of coherent, no noise, just synchronized. Wow. Now, I'm not sure how useful this will be, but this occurred to me this week. So I'll share it. It's on this vein, this topic, coherent attention. You know what a hologram is? Yes. You know how they make them? Not really. Okay. To explain that, I, I need to explain the difference between laser light and ordinary light. Okay. Ordinary light, the radiation is emanating chaotically or incoherently so that the wave of the light is beset by all kinds of other waves that are interfering with it. Okay. It's like um, it's like noise, actually, white noise. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so a one a 25 watt light bulb is about as <laughs> you can use it in your oven, and that's about all. A laser, the light waves are all emanating in sync with each other, and so they all reinforce each other instead of interfering and degrading each other. And a 25 watt laser could melt steel. Okay. That's the difference between incoherence and coherence. Lack of noise. Now to make a hologram, they have an object, a laser and a photographic plate. They aim, and the laser is aimed two places. One is at the object so that it reflects off the object and impinges on the photographic plate or surface. And the other is of the, the divided beam of the laser it goes straight to the photographic plate. And so there are differences of the signal or the wave imprint on the plate from the laser without the object and with the object. And it's the difference between those two that gets encoded onto the photographic plate. So that uh, once you have that photographic plate with that information on it, the way, uh, they, actually the holograms these days don't need coherent light to see, but the, in the beginning they did. You needed to shine a laser at it and that would activate the information, it would come out and duplicate the signal that went in from the object. So you would then see the object from all of the angles that light was coming off the object onto the plate. So it looks like three dimensional. <clears throat> well, we're talking about attention. When attention is incoherent, it isn't very strong. It's not very penetrating. And it shows only the superficial features of the item being regarded. But as attention gets more coherent, the information that's encoded in the whole field of experience is stimulated and you get what's called a gestalt, that is a holistic simultaneous perception of the totality of something. This is where intuitive insight comes in. In an intuition, you get the whole ball of wax at once. And then if you wanted to be creative, you might render it in a form such as writing or some other communication medium, but it would then be sequential. You have to look at this and look at that, look at this and look at that, and scan it. Whereas in a gestalt, it comes all at once. <clears throat> Have you ever read the book Stranger in a Strange Land? Uh -huh. Not that I remember. Okay, oh, you would. The author made up a word, grok, G-R-O-K. If you ever happen to read the book, it's a story of a certain character who comes to Earth who was the sole survivor of a Martian colony disaster. And this young fellow was the baby of parents who were part of the exploration team 
And this young fellow was raised by the Martians. And he was raised as a Martian. And one of their faculties was to be able to grok, G-R-O-K, something. You put your attention on it, you would get a feeling impression, and you would get the entire body of knowledge of that thing, including the way it experiences itself. Wow. Okay. And this is a term that some people who've read the book use in public writings. For people who happen to have read the book, it's a useful term. It's an intuitive faculty, and it happens not actually to be entirely fictional. Right. It is an actual faculty, and it, it, how else could the author have recognized it? It had to be present in himself in order to recognize it. You couldn't think it up from words. You'd had to have an intuition of it. So it's what I'm talking about. When attention gets coherent, more and more coherent, then things like heavens to Betsy, God winks, start happening. And they, in my observation, with ongoing development, happen more and more frequently. And they become more and more ordinary in the sense of commonplace and available. So a person's way of operating starts expanding in intuitive terms. So this is where precognition comes in. This is where telepathy comes in. All these so-called ESP are only the products of sufficiently coherent attention, laser-like, penetrating, able to activate all the information, bazunk just by virtue of attending. And it is a matter of degree. So a person who is undistracted by the noise of their conditioning, their history, their upbringing, all of that, which is noise, as they clean that up, attention becomes more and more coherent. Mm. Their speech takes on the characteristic of clarity and simplicity. Even when they're addressing complex subjects, they can render them in coherently understandable terms because their attention is coherent. Oh they, my. They apprehend experience more coherently and they can communicate experience more coherently. Oh my, dare to dream. What's that? Dare to dream. I don't think I understood dare, that. Dare, dare, dare to dream that I can oh, that dare I to dream. could okay. get there. Well, you are. In some ways, yes. Well, you know, this is yeah, we have a mountain of inheritance. Remember that we are a species with a 12,000 year history. This is beginning as of the end of the last ice age, which is a was a gigantic passage for the species to get through. The ones who survived were those capable of learning. Mm. And so it was a filter through which the human species was passed, winnowing out the stupids. Okay. The more intelligent ones came through. But as it immediately becomes apparent, multiple filterings are useful and necessary. Okay. But... We have 12,000 years of the history since then that was transmitted through the ancestral lineages and through the social traditions. A massive inheritance of memories provoked by circumstances that pertained at those early times and every time since. Almost all of which is obsolete now, but the memory imprints got carried forward. And it operates a kind of noise in the individual. And the current development of that noise is what is called individuation or the development of ego, self-sense, the ability to reflect on oneself, but also to defend one's, you know, beliefs and all the rest of that. Yes. And so we have 12,000 years of which uh, 11,900 years or so, let's give or take a few hundred, are obsolete noise, still resonating 
in us, in the species and in individuals, and rendering attention noisy. And so we see what I like to call an epidemic of, or pandemic of stupidity right now, because it's all kind of a piled up and accumulated and what's happening is a little bit like what happens when you're in a train that stops suddenly. Everything rushes to the forward and compacts, and you end up with density. And this is humanity right now. And so people are left with linear thinking and random efforts at creativity. Only the most elite advanced of the humans have enough clarity, enough uh, silence of mind that their attention is more coherent than most. And these are the artists and the spiritual masters. Their attention is coherent far beyond the common level. Yeah. Now, what has been lacking is a way of remedying that situation. Religion was an attempt to do so. Which situation? Of noisy, incoherent attention. Okay. They try to confine it by means of belief systems, religion first, and then science and technology second. Materialism is an effort to steady attention. People get pleasure from the acquisition of a new object because their attention is steadied upon that object, at least temporarily until the newness wears off and it just becomes another addition to the noise. Mm. The Tetra Seed procedures and other teachings that exist today, there are, and I wrote about it in my article on likenesses of the gold key release in well-known transformational teachings. I selected a bunch of examples. These are all ways of grooming attention to make it more coherent. They don't know in those terms that they're making it more coherent. But that is exactly what's happening. So back when you were a lot more emotionally volatile than you are now, that was your noise. And you've worked tetraseed and the noise has subsided to some degree. So you talk about stuff with me that few people could comprehend, as you know. Think of talking to your brother about what we talk about, right? Incoherent attention, lots of noise. I was with you to a point, and then I'm not. Well, if you talk about God winks with your brother, what would the response be? Oh. Oh, that I get, I got it. Yeah. Okay. The forum is a great deal about making attention coherent. How mm -hmm. agreements steady attention. Telling the truth avoids noise. You know the saying: if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Right. So lying is noise. So. Different teachings have more or less direct ways of making attention more coherent, reducing the noise, improving the signal to noise ratio. And as that happens, a person's attention steadies and deepens. Mm. And they start perceiving modes of information that noisier people miss. Mm. 